Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, here we are, Podchat Live, episode 90, and we're recording this Thursday, 4th of February, 2021. And we've got a really fun episode ahead here. Um, I'm sure you know these two faces that have, that have been kind enough to join us. We've got Dr. Brad and Dr. Ebony uh, from the hit TV show, uh, My Thieves Are Killing Me, which we'll talk a bit more about in a second. Uh, if you are watching live and you've got any questions for these guys, please fire them in and we'll, we'll try and get to them. Because they're so busy and because it's the middle of the day in the in the US and we're, we're, they're coming at us from, from East Coast, West Coast, Brad, Ebony, respectively. Um, they we're fairly short on time, so we're probably going to be fairly brisk with this episode, 30 minutes or so. So if you want a question asked, you better, you better get in quick. Um, I've got to start, if it's okay. And thank you both so much for joining us, guys. Really looking forward to this Good one. Good to be um, here. <laughs> I've got to start by doing some fatherly duties uh, in that my um, my eldest son is seven years old and he's just caught wind of YouTube and he's just worked out that sometimes daddy's on, on YouTube because he's got his own podcast. And he keeps saying to me, when's your next episode? When's your next episode? And today when he asked me, I said, actually, I'm doing one tonight. And he asked me who was on and I, I gave him your names and he said, who are they? And I said, they're, they're from the TV. He's like, so you have famous people on? And I said, I do. Um, <laughs> I hope you forgive me for doing this, but he, he, he said, I want to draw them a picture and you have to show them. Now, of course, if you're listening to the podcast after the fact, this bit is not going to work whatsoever. But um, I'm just going to show you this picture. This is from George. Oh. It, these are a pair of feet, but, but it's a flip. It's a flip book x-ray. Wow. And, <laughs> and I promised I him. It. <laughs> I promised him I would show that and he will ask me in the morning to pull up YouTube. So I, thank you so much for, for humoring me. Um, let's get oh, on he, the, the... He, did, he did a great job. I, I don't know if we can work on those feet or not. They're too outrageous. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, maybe um, next let, season, who knows? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's, get, let's get a little bit more serious and talk about the show. We, uh, we know it's a TLC show, a hit on TLC. It's just started its second series. In the UK here, we've had to watch it for the last year on the Discovery Plus app. But yesterday, you just hit our free t free view TVs. You're on the Really channel in the UK. So your audience, UK audience, is about to grow even more, I think. Australia, I think, are a wee bit behind. I'm not sure what, how Craig gets, gets his fix of you guys, probably YouTube and things. Um, <laughs> And I just get, I guess we should probably start by just saying thank you for for such global promotion of, of our profession, because as we know, with podiatry, we, we, we strive hard to get people to understand what we do and the scope of what we do. And, and this is evidence. And this is another family story. But this is evidence by the fact that you have won over my wife. And I've been a <laughs> I've been a podiatrist for uh, nearly 20 years. and I've been my wife for over half of those for 10 years. And she's had nothing more than a, a, a very passing uh, polite interest in podiatry and what I do. She's not in the medical professions whatsoever. But she's always liked reality TV. She loves uh, Sandra, Do uh, Dr. Sandra, Pimp Dr. Pimple Popper. And I thought when I saw this show, that I'm gonna, I, can, I can get her in here. So I looked at the first episode <laughs> and when I saw Brad, I thought, I can't show my wife this. Best case scenario, <laughs> She's going to fall in love and leave me. Um, at, at the very least, she works out I'm not the most uh, attractive podiatrist uh, anymore. But that didn't happen. And apologies to Brad. Uh, we are going to come to a member of your fully paid up fan club shortly. But my wife utterly fell in love with you, Ebony. Um, it was <laughs> season one, episode one. And it was the lady with the the infected, keloid, warty sort of lesion mm -hmm. on the plant surface of the foot yeah. that you, you sort of. Uh, you remember it well, my I'm sure that you did. Stacey. Some... Yeah, she had yeah, three beds. Stacey, yeah. And my wife watched, first of all, you walked in and she said, this lady is majestic. And then you did this amazing surgery, stem cell injections. Uh, and this woman's, you could just see her quality of life immediately change. I'm and I believe a my... little bit. So, um... yeah. Oh, sorry, I think you've frozen a bit, but we... My wife's exact words were, Ebony is literally an angel. They were her, her, her exact words. Now, if you can win over my wife, um, you can win over anyone. So I'm, I'm convinced you're winning over people far and wide. Um, Brad, I might come to you first because I think Ebony's just having connection difficulties. Can you talk yeah, a bit I'm about... Having, I'm sorry, I'm having oh. connection difficulties. I'm back, though, I think. Good. <laughs> sorry. Well, I have to tell you, my wife, my wife thinks you're an angel. I don't That's know if you can hear me, thing. in, but I've, I've got some real big problems happening on my end. Yeah, I've got everyone. I'm still good. Yeah, Brad's good. Let's come to Brad first then. Um, Brad, what's your experience been of how podiatry, how the show and you guys have promoted podiatry with the kind of feedback you've been getting and probably the, the fans that slide into your DMs on a, on a regular basis, I would guess? 
Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, one of the things that Ebony and I uh, really focus on is really representing podiatry and you know representing our profession the way that it deserves. Um, you know, for a while there, you know, I was having just people ask, you know, what is podiatry? Is it you know a foot show or is it a you know a family medicine or do you treat kids or pediatrics? Every question gets asked about what podiatry is. And finally, I think people are starting to come around to, you know, with the help of this show, you know, understand what we do. Now on the show, they might be very extreme. You know, we might not be seeing those patients every day, but people know our scope now and we can treat the smallest thing to the biggest. And I know I'm very, very, very happy to show that. I know Ebony is too. Um, and we're, I'm ready for podiatry to start, you know, really showing everybody what we can do yeah uh, your experience been similar yeah. haven't you? You, you are you getting regular um, fan mail or? the first the show first started oh can you not hear me i just froze yeah just frozen again i am getting a bad signal here guys i'm so sorry can you Yep, you're back. See if you're I back. move a little bit closer here. Am I back now? Okay, I'm just gonna hold it. <laughs> I'm closer, but I was gonna kind of add what Brad said that we are part of interesting things and. I've lost Ebony again. Does anyone else? Yeah, I, I don't know whether you can hear me, in, but I've got problems on my end too. I'm no, just... every, everything's working fine, can Craig. Except Ebony's uh, completely frozen. No, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm having no ends of problems on my end. Everything's good. It's just Ebony's Wi-Fi, I believe. Okay, maybe let's come back to let's come back to Brad again then. Sorry, Brad. We, it looks like you're going to have to steal the show. If she freezes, I could I could pick up, you know, such a professional. Okay. I didn't think. Yeah, absolutely. Consumer professional. Didn't expect anything we'll less. Help, so we'll help, we'll help each other out. And if I freeze, <laughs> then she'll help me. Yeah, I think she's definitely okay. having Wi-Fi type things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I think what your I question think? was is. Oh, there we back. Go. Okay, she's back. I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah. That never happened. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry, Vinny. I've been having big problems on my end. I've had to log out, log back in, and I don't think anyone even noticed. <laughs> Craig, okay, we're not, Craig, sorry. we're not, we're not going to get that TLC gag. It's, you know, they, they're watching this and they're seeing what an absolute yeah. shambles this is. Um, sorry, Ebony, go on. We've got you now. You, your signal seems quite strong. Go for it. Right. No, I was just saying that, you know, we're very happy to promote the field of podiatry. I know for both Brad and I, it was kind of a, a uncharted territory when we first started filming because it was so unexpected. I mean, we were both contacted at the same time um, by the producer, Eugene, who is the mind uh, brainchild of this show. And it was just kind of like, really, you want to make a show about feet? But sure, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do. And, um, you know, I think Brad and I were both, um, you know, very good candidates because of our backgrounds and the fact that we work well with the TLC audience. Um, our personalities, I think, are very similar. Once we finally met, it was kind of like, oh, this makes sense. It's my co-star, you know? Because <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, the, the show is not only about, you know, the feet specifically, but it's also about the medical journey and how you, we kind of conduct ourselves in the doctor patient relationship, which I do think showcases podiatry very well. So. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that you when you first met, because a lot of people that first drop into the show um, at, at first glance, and if they're not really paying attention, they might think that you're both in the same practice, whereas actually Brad's over, uh, let me say, in New Jersey and you're in, in California. Um, right. And I've even seen I've even seen some comments that just assumed you were a married couple. I don't know how, how that works. Whether you get that one, um, so, we do uh, get that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. And you both got um, really monstrous uh, social media followings, and you both got really really good sort of social media games. Did the social was the social media audience there first, and that's why the TVs reached out, or has the social media audience sort of grown sort of thereafter? A bit of both. I know that I know that I was contacted. Uh, through social media, uh, you know, 
the, the person, uh, his name is Eugene Young from Renegade. He reached out uh, to see if I was interested to just film a pilot. And, I, you know, immediately I was like, well, you know, no one's going to be interested in, in this, you know, because you don't, really just don't think your profession is as interesting as something that's on TLC, um, let alone something that, you know, is successful or will be successful. Ebony, were you contacted through that or were you contacted by phone? No. I mean, I had a far significantly less social media following than you guys. You're popular in your own right. Um, <laughs> I had, I was a little different. I had a social media following that was just kind of starting. Um, and I'm, I'm in private practice. So I was doing a lot of my own social media marketing for my private practice. And I was contacted through my office. So they had emailed my office like a number of times. And we just kind of kept deleting the email. We were like, this is crazy. Like nobody wants to do this. And so one day, you know, the office manager was like, these people keep emailing. It could be something, you know, so you might want to check it out. And I emailed them back and we had a Skype visit. And the same thing kind of happened. They were like, well, we want to follow you around. We want to get to know you and see if you would be a great candidate for this, this show we're trying to produce. So um, after they filmed the pilot, I think, Brad, if, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, in addition to us, they filmed other podiatrists as well right like they filmed like a bunch of podiatrists to see who would be like a best better fit like for the show and what they were trying to do and after the pilot it was what months it was months like i didn't think it was going to happen and then all of a sudden we get this message like hey it's gonna be you and dr shaker on this show are you guys ready to do this and we were like we just found each other on social media and we were like, can you believe what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna ask you guys how life may have changed um, both sort of within work and when you're not filming and, and outside work shortly. But loads of people, when we announced we were getting you guys on, uh, emailed me and, and they were, they, these were podiatrists, clinicians, and they, they were just so fascinated about the process, how it all, how it all happens, how, how do patients sort of get in to see you? So I, I'm guessing it's not the case that a patient comes to see you on a normal clinic day and you say, hey, you know, you'd be great for my TV show. I'm guessing these patients seek out to be on TV. I could be wrong, but could you give us a bit of an insight as much as you're allowed to as to how a patient finds their way from sitting at home with a, with a, with a foot problem to suddenly being on, on your couch sort of on, on national TV? So we have a casting, we have a casting team for the show. Uh, the casting team, you know, kind of reaches out to all different, you know, platforms and they also get emails every day too about people that are in pain and, you know, people that think they would be a good candidate for the show. Maybe the people that don't have the means for surgery or just really just have nowhere else to turn. Uh, I know that I have private patients that drive from all over also and, you know, just want to be on the show because maybe someone's not answering their email or, you know, they just want help now and they don't know which way to go. I had a guy that flew up from Texas because his email didn't get answered within a week. So next thing I knew he was in my office. Um, so I was like, look, this guy's a great candidate. You know, maybe we should put him on the show. And lo and behold, he's on the show and we operated on him. He's doing great. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and same with me, yeah. like um, at first it was a combination of both like patients from the show and then patients that found me through the show. Um, and now people, they're, it's kind of confusing. Sometimes people would like walk in like camera ready because they think that like the TV cameras are here. And I'm like, nobody's here to film you. Like, <laughs> are they disappointed like, just to see you? Yeah, they're disappointed. And sometimes, you know, they just hear her regular patient visits. And they're like, but if I can be on the show, I'll wait. I'll wait just to see, you know. But most people really do have problems that need to be taken care of like quickly. So it's a combination of both, but mostly they go through the show now. And these are patients, and, and forgive me if this is uh, rude, rude or sensitive to ask, but are these patients that are paying for care and it just happens that the TV is there? Or, for example, do they think, uh, you know, I, I can fly there from Texas and the TV, the TV production company will pick up the tab? Uh, so there is no, a huge process. Yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely understood, you know, before they, you know, appear. Um, you know, kind of what is expected maybe through their insurance or if they don't have, you know, the means to pay for surgery. I know that Ebony and I do stuff pro bono. Um, now, if they have insurance, you know, with surgery center fees, you know, uh, hardware, you know, those things need to be run and paid for by someone, you know, so, you know, those are the things that will need to be paid for with insurance or maybe picked up by the network or, 
But yeah, as far as Ebony and I are concerned, we do stuff pro bono. Cool. Um, I don't know why people are so fascinated with, with yeah. uh, whether they're getting treatment for free, but I think some people thought, oh, you know, because you see some stories where people say, I've had this foot problem for 12 years. And, you know, you quite rightly say, why, why have you had it so long? Why have you not seen someone? And they say, well, I'm, I'm too embarrassed. And a, and a reasonable thing would be if you've been too embarrassed to see someone for 12 years, why are you happy to show it on national telly? So I think that the philosophy was being, oh, they must be happy to suddenly show it because they're getting it for free. But you know, what, what are your thoughts on why people may hide it, something away for so long because they're embarrassed, but then be happy to be on TV with it? Have you, have you picked, unpicked at that at all? Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more with that. You know, the embarrassment and then being on national TV, it's like, well, are you really embarrassed? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I get it. I used to ask the same question. Guys, something's uh, going on with our just, internet. We still got you. Yeah, we still got, we can still see you clear and hear you. Yeah, I just think ultimately oh, sometimes oops. people's only outlet and, you know, although we are helping Not out okay. in, in some ways, uh, they, they literally just feel like this is this is the way to go about their care now. And these people are in pain. And if, if they feel like this is the way to, to go about it, and if they're a good candidate and and they're picked up for it, I'm more than happy to help them. Yeah, uh, yeah, it makes sense. I'll ask this next question while Ebony's reconnecting. I can see our sort of uh, picture's gone again. Um, obviously, we know that when we see a patient and um, when we first meet them, the, the initial sort of uh, interaction and history taking is quite a, a long and protracted process. And, and that's not really going to work for TV. Um, so a lot of the time when we watch the, the, the cases on TV, it's, it's a very slick kind of abridged or edited sort of, you know, you walking in and meeting them for the first time, although I'm, I'm kind of guessing that isn't the first time you've met them. Uh, that's just my hunch. Um, do you have any say over the editing process? Because, Sorry. you know, I've certainly uh, okay, not envisaged a scenario where you could be sort of asking oh, no. some questions and some other professionals you know, watching well, online and says, minutes morning. I might not be really quite. <laughs> Great, just having a private conversation. That's okay. Um, I can envision a scenario where you're, you're, you do a, they show an abridged version of a history taking. Some other sort of uh, professional on, on social media says, well, that wasn't a very thorough history taking. And we all know that probably wasn't the, the true reflection of what happened. Do you get a stay over what goes in, what goes out? Or you, you work very closely with the production team on, on how to make a, an hour consultation kind of look quite full, even though it's only being shown for 10 minutes? We don't have... Um privileges for the editing, which I, I kind of sometimes wish we did. Um, and no, it's not the first time that we are seeing this patient or, or getting to know this patient. Um, the production team does um, consult us before they cast these patients just to say, hey, this is what their their issue is. What can you do? Is it, Or if anything can be done, you know, so they definitely run everything by us. Um, we definitely uh, have the patient kind of do the same process as our normal patients would do. So we know the history, we know everything, we were collecting images way beforehand and kind of formulating a plan before we see this patient in person. So that's why it's kind of a, a bridge version, like you have such a complicated issue, I know exactly what to do. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not kind of like that, but um, there's a bigger, larger process. Like I know Brad and I both, we kind of go back and forth on, on email chains and text messages like, whoa, like, what would you do with this? You know, we're consulting our mentors. Like we're, you know, it's, it's a lot a lot more behind the scenes that um, is, is to this before, you know, we're seeing patients and curing them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I thought that might be the case. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've all had yeah, it's, a long, it's a it's a long process. Yeah, we've all we, had we students really sit sure in with we us. We understand um, what's going on. We, we vet the patient make sure they're healthy, you know, I mean, everything is checked off. Uh, our, our initial meeting is, you know, sometimes filming, it takes an hour or so, but we, you know, we only can show five, 10 minutes of that, you know, top. So yeah, no, our history and stuff is, it's thorough, trust me. Yeah, and there's a lot of things that don't get put on camera and there's a lot of things that get yeah. edited and spliced together that make it seem like it's, oh, it's a simple fix for that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, we talked a bit about sort of the, the, the positives of the fans, but just briefly, touch. do you get much hate? You know, this is this is 2021. It's social media. In particular, do, do other health professionals ever sort of, you know, fire shots your way? Or is that something you, you, you're pretty lucky with? Um, 
I I feel like I've been pretty lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> most most people are very positive and things of that nature. You know, you're always gonna have you know some haters out there, but I think that they're haters across the board. I don't take offense to it. That's just your personality. You know, um, I think that Brad and I both are taking a huge chance and a huge risk by doing the show on television, kind of doing our profession. So I think a large majority of uh, the podiatry population specifically has been very happy and supportive and behind us. Um, but you can't expect it to be 100%, you know, and those kind of things, we just kind of dust it off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's let, let's talk about how the, the show sort of grows over time. So like we say, Series 2, uh, I think it's just, just released sort of a week ago, I think, from what I gather from your social media. I don't think we've quite got it here yet. When these shows first start and they're, they're fairly new and people who are sort of obviously when we first see them on TV, they've been filmed months and months before people coming in to see you now probably know the show, know of the show. They've seen the show. Um, and as a result, they might come in with a bit of a different uh, approach or mentality or attitude than perhaps those initial people. Do I liken it to when we watch reality TV shows, you know, Big Brother or whatever, whatever type. And those first couple of episodes were really sort of genuine and unique. And after you get to a sort of series sort of eight or nine, you've got people on there that are just on there being maniacs, just just wanting their 15 minutes of fame. I know it's only series two. Have you noticed the types of cases or the types of people have, have slowly changed over the, over the kind of two series you've recorded? And, and do you expect them to change kind of moving forward? Because I'm sure you've got multiple um, series uh, coming as well. Honestly, not really. Uh, it's, it's very hard to fake pain and the deformities that these people have. Uh, we're not really seeing a ton of run of the mill cases that we see all the time. So I could see someone being an opportunist and showing up on camera and, you know, maybe being a ham like people that, you know, could be on seasons of Big Brother. I mean, look, TV has a personality and you have to play to, you know, the audience and personalities ultimately get shown. Um, but Ebony and I were the same. You know, episode one is we're going to be episode 22. Um, and the patients, in my opinion, there's, there's, it's really hard to fake the stuff that they have. So, yeah, it, it's hard to play that up for camera. Yeah, I think that every one of our TLC patients is definitely genuinely in pain, really seeking help and having no other option or, or looked at our TV show and said, this is who I want to, you know, trust to do my surgery. Um, in my daily life, it's a little different with my regular patients. Sometimes they come in and like a, a two would be a 10, you know, kind of pain. It's a little bit of a little bit of drama there. But I mean, you always have to realize that they're they're here thinking too that sometimes they might there might be cameras, you know. I I, I don't know if that's just because I'm in California <laughs> or <laughs> or what it is or what it is, but I've actually had patients ask me so are cameras like here? I'm like, no, no one's in here but us, you know? So, like. <laughs> uh, um, let's, let's talk a bit about, um, while we're talking about social media a little bit, talk a bit about Twitter. Because um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm watching a show, uh, and when I, my, my kids, both of them love the masked singer. So what we do while it's on, we're trying to guess who it is, is I'll go on Twitter and, and I'll look up the hashtag, the masked singer and see, you know, what, what, what the buzz is, you know, and I love being on Twitter when there's a show on TV. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but when your episode is airing, have you ever looked at the hashtag, uh, my feet are killing me? Is that something you, you entertain? Do you get involved in that? Yeah, we live tweet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to read out my, my three favorites that, that, were, that were just from the last week. Uh, and there, there were so many, but, um, and I forgive, forgive my, if there's any colorful language, I'm reading these verbatim and my English accent might not do this justice either. Cause this was when I think your episode was live in, 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 um, in the US. Uh, in third place, holy shit, this brother got six toes. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I, I, the, the reason, the reason I love that is because as podiatrists, some, seeing someone with six toes doesn't really phase us. It doesn't really shock us. It's not, you know, we, we were so, so desensitized to it. And I think we sometimes forget mm -hmm. that normal, not normal, but, you know, like lay population, that's, that's a really, really big deal for them. So I love that one. Um, in at number two, I'm not high enough to watch this show, which <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, speaks back to our, our concerns that maybe people wouldn't be interested in a show about feet. And in at number one, and I promised we'd get, we'd circle back to this, Brad. 
I wouldn't show Dr. Brad my feet. He's so pretty, I want to cry. <laughs> 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 on, on which note, on which note, I promised I would embarrass her. A few Fridays ago, a really good friend and colleague of mine and Craig's, um, associate professor, so we're not talking fango here, we are talking associate professor Kylie Williams from Australia, PhD, more published in the world of podopediatrics than anyone I know. She's had a few wines. She sends me a private message saying, here she is, she's, she's, in, she's watching us live, hopefully. She sends me a private <laughs> message saying, you have to tell Brad I've had the hots for him for ages. I've had a really, I've had a really shitty year and I need him to give me a shout out. It's totally up to him whether he flexes while he does it. Now, I, 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 did, I did not promise Kylie you'd do it. I just promised I'd ask. So I've done my, I've done, I've done my bit and it's up to you. Who is it? Say it Kylie, again. Do, uh, do, Associate Professor Kylie Williams in Australia. <laughs> hey, Kylie Williams, thank you so much. I'm going to flex down here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, so, Craig, any anything come through on the Facebook group that, that I'm just conscious we're almost at the half hour mark. These guys are super busy. Um, they've been generous with their time. Is there anything that the Facebook viewing audience are desperate to ask? No, 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 no questions. Just lots of comments. So I've put some of the key ones up. So yeah, no, it's it's everyone's starstruck, myself included. So uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Oh. What have we got? I hate you right now. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> 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 she did message me a few hours after she sent that. I think because she had, she said, "I sort of regret asking you to do that." I was like, "You know, I'm going to do it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've embarrassed Kylie. I've shown my son's picture. I've told Ebony that my wife's in love with her. Could you give my wife a shout out, please, Ebony? My wife's name is Vic. Vic her name is Victoria, and uh, I did say to her because I know this is the 90th episode. She has watched exactly zero prior to today. <gasps> She is upstairs. She is upstairs in the bedroom watching. And I did say to her, once we, once we, uh, you know, before we go live, just come in, and I'll, I'll come and say hi to her. Yeah, Ebony. tell her to come in and say hi. Oh no, you don't want her to come in. Oh, I do. I, she, oh, she, okay. I think, I think she got starstruck. I think she, she was. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, oh. Okay. yeah, she is. Well, she is your biggest fan. Well, Victoria, thank you for watching the show and being such a good supporter. I appreciate you and hello. <laughs> and she finally respects me and what I do for a living for the first time oh, yeah. in over a decade. So, <laughs> so you have a tough job. You, you, you've saved the marriage. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for your yeah. time. Really, really appreciate it. You've, you know, um, it's been loads of fun. I know I get the impression in series two that Dr. Sarah is, I know she was in series one, but I, I get the impression from the promos that I've been seeing online that she's got a much more, uh, sort of front of house sort of places. Is it going to be a three, three, three person show from this point forward rather than the two of you? Yeah, uh, Dr. Sarah yeah. is definitely uh, yeah, doing, a, doing a lot more of the show. Um, she's bringing cases to the forefront. So she'll be doing cases. She'll be, you know, having office visits. And yeah, she's killing it too. So um, hey, the more the merrier. You want to be on the show? <laughs> I'm not, I am. My feet are killing me in the UK. <laughs> nowhere near attractive enough if that show happens it won't be this that's on it I um, please do apologize to dr yes. sarah for us not inviting her on um but maybe if you guys would have, be happy to come back at some point once you're on series four or five and you're you're, you're all you'll probably be too famous you won't answer our calls at that point i'm certain but <laughs> we will we will we'll, we'll pull in dr sarah and we'll get the three of you that'd be awesome yeah okay okay thanks absolutely okay, great thanks very much guys